So folks have been asking us, Karen, about um, what the heck is a giraffe? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the significance of the giraffe. Yeah, which is a lot of fun. And I, I think we should answer that question last. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I know, uh, you know, we've both had our own business for a long time. Yep. And man, I really, history goes way back, right? So my work ethic and what I was taught about work came all from a masculine point of view. And I worked in operations and it was all very responsive, right? Policies and procedure and rules. This is what happens. This is when funding arrives. This is when funding disappears. Everything was based on the, on the calendar and what was happening with it. And it created a, a structure and an urgency. I remember when I was in government <laughs> before um, how, how funding used to happen when I first got into government was that if you didn't spend your whole budget by March 31st, you couldn't justify needing the full budget. Right. So, so we would less. buy all kinds of stuff. Like we would buy whatever. And so, and, and some departments bought stupid stuff, like a whole bunch of pens and paper and office supplies and stuff. And they would just stockpile it. Right. <laughs> then the funding changed. And I was so glad that happened. I mean, anyway, <laughs> you get a whole politics thing about that. Um, but it became more, what was different about it is that it was more performance-based. You had to justify your funding based on what you did with your funding. And, right. and what do you plan on doing? It was, it actually was measured on performance. So it was a very different thing. It was no longer a bad thing to give up money in the fourth quarter. It was actually a good thing. If you, if your plans have changed, then give the money up. You're going to get points for that. Right. It, so it, things were, the focus was on the right place, right? Which changed things. But when I got into business, I was still very much, when's my fiscal year, right? What, <laughs> what am I going to, what was my 30, 60, 90 day plan? What? Yeah. And there was so much changing all the time. I couldn't even figure out what goals to set or what key performance indicators were important. There was nothing, nothing got solid enough in my business to ever even repeat it. <laughs> well, and, and my history is really different from like, I came from a sales background. And so sales is about what are your numbers this, you know, today, this week, this month. And it was, it was all about um, the, the, sort of the number crunching and the, um, the activity. So it was very sort of heads down into the daily activity. And so there wasn't, you know, and it was really month to month. Like it wasn't even going for even the quarter because like the sales that I was doing was more transactional. And, and so it was like, where, kind of what have you done this week? What have you done this month? and this sort of very narrow view. And so- We're Only as good as your last sale kind of thing. Well, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So it's, yeah, different perspectives. And so coming into running my own business, it was actually very easy to transition that to what's my next sale, what's my next thing. But the challenge was that I, there was no longer term plan. And so I would end up in these huge peaks and valleys. Right, I'd have a whole bunch of sales, and then I'd do all the work, and then I'd be like, "Damn it!" <laughs> I mean, to start the whole process again. That's yeah. right. Yeah, which is what happens when we do it by ourselves. Right, I had the I had the same thing happening in my business, but I know the two of us, as we started, we were sort of on this journey together, learning more about ourselves and growing and finding more of ourselves, and as the energetics and sort of exploring the feminine and all of the flow and all of that's great. And there almost was no way to integrate that into business. Like it seemed like oil and water that well, while I, we're not working, we can go and play in the woods and have a fire and, and do ceremony or whatever, but bringing it into the business just felt weird. Well, and I'd watched a few other people sort of attempt to it and it, it seemed like they had sort of thrown all of the things that I knew worked out and were just kumbayaing it. 
like that and they weren't having the the impact or the revenue that they were looking for there and i was like i i couldn't see how to how to integrate the i knew i i knew as i got more integrated and really was owning both my masculine and feminine that it was working for me personally and i knew like i we talked a lot about this we knew that we needed to have both in our business and and we couldn't quite figure out how to make that happen no i remember trying to bring the law of attraction into my business and my head exploding when <laughs> i would instead of a goal i would put out there this is what i want i'd put the vision board up but then as soon as i went to track it that does this mean i'm attached does the fact that I'm tracking the fact that I haven't met it yet actually, and just like my head just went in circles. Like <laughs> if I'm supposed to be trusting and not doing anything and sort of letting it happen, what do I do in my business? Does that mean that I market? Does that mean that I don't, I don't know. It, it, is doing business actually making me not get what I, oh my God, in a freaking spin. And it didn't matter what books I read or what videos I listened to. It was like, this is not working. <laughs> But I knew that it was possible. I knew that we could get there, right? How, it was like the, how do we do that? And well, so, I, of, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, one of the, it just came into my awareness as you were saying that is one of the things that I've seen when I was doing money coaching was creating a flow in, the, in my client's money allowed them to, um, to have a different perspective and and so that it wasn't just you know what's due and what's like but creating that flow of money and uh especially for people who got paid um uh where they weren't getting the same amount all the time uh creating a situation where they could create that flow and i remember thinking about that last summer and because we were we were looking at like how do we create this flow in our business so that we can find that balance of the masculine and the feminine and being able to really bring that into our world here. Yeah. It, and it was for Jackie and, and you and I both, we all wanted that same thing, right? Yeah. We wanted to be whole people in our business and in our world, right? Like business had finally got to the point where business wasn't about just providing a life that business wanted, we wanted to be part of our life. Right. We wanted to bring all of us here and we started experimenting with different things. And I think one of the biggest decisions that we made is that we didn't want to create a business out of urgency. That it wasn't going to be a series and sprints and it wasn't freaking going to be a marathon. No. No. Like, you know how beat up people are after a marathon? Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, we didn't want, we really didn't want that. We wanted something that was going to feed us, fuel us. I think, you know, we both had spent a lot of time in our business where our business was the the hungry, the like the hungry stomach. And we felt like we were just constantly feeding it. And we wanted it to shift so that our business could feed us financially, energetically, emotionally, spiritually, so that we were getting as much as we were giving and and so finding that you know there's lots of ways that we're doing it and i'm excited to talk about a bunch of them um but one of the places what we that we started with was looking at you know three women running a company looking at our own flow and looking at how connected we are with as women with the moon cycle you know it's a very feminine very um, grounded uh, cycle of of time and space and energy and you know so it was last September right we're like well what if we what if we actually did the things in our business that made sense based on how we were feeling because we started noticing that there were times in the in in the moon cycle that we felt more energy and times that we really wanted to be more quiet yeah. and it was really we like, had our oh, own ebbs and flows yeah so let's like let's pay attention to this and we started we started playing with it we're like okay well let's just see what would it be like if we actually 
matched our activities to the moon cycles. And we started that in, in I guess, the end of September of 20. Yeah, I think, we were, I think we were watching it and playing with it for months. Yeah. But we sort of made it official. Yeah. In September. Like, oh yeah, I guess, yeah. So here's what we're actually gonna do. Yeah, because I remember there being about every month, a few days, it was right around the new moon where I couldn't actually put sentences together. <laughs> right? And then there were other days where I was almost manic. It was like I could get so much done and I would work 12 and 14 hour days, but it was feeding me and I was still sleeping really well and it was great. And then, and then it would just go away. And I'm like, these are sweet spots. <laughs> and we wanted to capture those for sure. So yeah, so I remember, I remember that meeting because uh, we did a little arts and crafts project with it too. <laughs> right, understanding. And in the beginning, we also thought, I remember this, it was funny. It was like, okay, so this is waning time, right? So this is after the full moon. And that means that in this two or so weeks, like it's all inside. Like it, it was, we almost thought like it was a switch, right? Okay, full moon's done. Now it's all inside activities. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna focus uh, on a little bit of contraction, kind of like, you know, as you're, as you're breathing out, right? Right, all of that. And then after the new moon that, okay, now this is all gonna be lead generation. That, yeah. and, and it was funny because we had this little sign we each have one to remind us whether we were in waxing or waning. And then we soon figured out that actually, no, it, it does this. And then it does this. Right. And that's <laughs> how the feminine works as opposed to the switch, 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 which is again, the more masculine energy. And we need both. It was just that we all have so much of the masculine already because that's how we've done our, our world for yeah. so long. Absolutely. For so long. Yeah. And, so, and right, we played all, with it all the way through the summer. And then we, after we had had some time to play with it, we're like, okay, let's, let's actually try this in our business. Yeah. And so we shifted to running on, instead of on the monthly calendar into the moon cycles. And we decided, of course, to call it a period. Because why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> new moon to new moon is a period. And yeah. then no, we full, got, full moon to full moon. Right. I period. Yesterday too. Full moon to full moon is a period. And then in order to have a, a little bit more breathing room, we put three or four of those together to create a cycle. Yeah. And the cool thing about that is that instead of working on a quarter, which is like three months, having these four periods to create a cycle created so much more space yeah. for creation. And four is like the number of actually creating form, right? So it's very cool. So we just thought they create this space and then inside of a cycle has its own flow. Yes. Right at the beginning of the cycle, because we've planned beforehand and the and the creation and the projects that open and then into like period three and four, they need to be closing and they need to be done. Yeah. Right. And whether it's phases of projects. And so it's created this. It's like the business breathes. Yes. Right. The way we do. And I'm finding that I'm so much more productive than I ever was trying to get it done to deadlines. And what we're doing is more meaningful, yeah. right? I, I mean, that's what I've been finding anyway. It's just, it's, it's been so much better. And there's been so much more space to pay attention to our intuition. If something isn't working out, because we're not driving to a deadline, like we no. still know when we want to get it done, but because it's not just about getting it done or just about the check mark, as soon as we know something's off, we tweak it. Like there's just a lot of space to be able to do that. Right. And still get it done on time. Yeah. So now tell them what happens when there's four cycles. Because if there's going to be roughly four weeks in a period and there's four periods in the cycle, that means that there has to be four cycles. That's right. And when you get four cycles, it's about the same amount of time. Uh, when we looked at it, we're like, well, it's not a year. It's actually sort of 15 to 16 months. Uh -huh. And that's how long it takes to gestate a giraffe. <laughs> so four periods to create 
a cycle for cycles creates a giraffe. Yep, absolutely. So there we go. So we are, that is our flow in our business. Not only is it creating this breathing in our business and this space and this opportunity, it's shifting us out of the very sort of tactical old way that we had done stuff. And it's fun. <laughs> Like it's fun to, it, it causes us to constantly shift our perspective, right? We're not, and I'm doing the money stuff. And so there's, you know, we still have a little bit of a month end kind of thing going on. And the accountant's still working in quarter. Yeah, we'll, we'll get her there eventually. <laughs> but, but the cool thing is that in my world, it actually is, uh, it's like, oh, I, that needs to get done because that person needs it. And it's, it's almost, um, uh, it, it's like a little sort of push off into the next period. It's yep. very cool. It, and it, and they work well together. So yeah. with having this flow allows us to have a broader perspective. Um, and it causes me to question stuff, which is great. It's like, well, if we're doing it this way, then what about that? Yeah. I love it. It's so good. The other thing that we figured out, because this is our first giraffe that we're in, that will end August 18th, is that right? Yeah. August 18th will be the end of our very first full giraffe for Triad. And one of the things we realized is that we're now in the fourth cycle. So the fourth cycle is all about closing down. It's all about endings. It's all about finishings. And going into this strategically, looking at all the projects we have open, and questioning whether or not they're still, do they still strategically matter? Yep. Because so much has, has evolved and changed and over time in this beautiful way. And what, when can we get them done? And it's our goal that by the third period in this cycle, it's all done. So the fourth period is just about planning for the next one. It's just business as usual. It's a beautiful opportunity for us to maybe only work part of the week every week. That's a place for us to rest and recuperate as we come down off before we start into a brand new giraffe. And I think we also realize that every giraffe, there's like one thing that we are gestating that we're birthing into the world. There's one giraffe that we're birthing. And this first giraffe, we've been birthing triad, <laughs> right? <laughs> and we're really seeing that, that it's taken this sort of 15, 16 months to pull together what we didn't even know what it looked like. Like it really was embryonic in the very beginning and we just knew we had something special and we just cared for it and let it grow on its own. And, you know, it'll all be where it needs to be by the time we get into August and next giraffe will be next giraffe. Yep. And we'll see what we want to birth next. Cool stuff. Absolutely. So I'm excited to be sharing this theme all for all now. Um, as of taping, <laughs> the official super full moon was last night. Yes. So we are at the beginning of a period. And so for this whole time between now and the next full moon, that's our theme. That's what we're going to be talking about is the flow. We're going to be talking about how we do this and how other people might want to come and play with it too. <laughs> 